Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship. Religious people may want to go to temple once a week and they may do prayer and they may do some ritualist rituals. However, Christianity is more than doing a ritual. It's about listening and obeying God. Now, how many of you are listening to the voice of God, the Word of God? And more importantly, how many of you are obeying God's Word? The book of Acts is a full-up man and woman of God who were listening to the Word of God and also who are obeying God's Word to the death. Now, last week we learned from Stephen's example. He was one of seven deacons. He was being full of the Holy Spirit and he was preaching the Gospel of Christ Jesus boldly. Um, but his preaching ministry in human perspective was not that successful because there was no one coming to Jesus uh, through his preaching right away. However, God used his martyrdom, his death, to advance God's kingdom, to advance the Gospel. So, God is in control he is sovereign and he uses any circumstances for his glory. Now, in today's passage, Acts chapter 8, we see another deacon. His name is Philip. And we'll see how he was sensitive, how sensitive he was to the Holy Spirit and how was how he was obeying um, the voice of the Holy Spirit. So, let's look at Acts chapter 8, verse 26, and let's see how the Holy Spirit was speaking to Philip. But an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Get up and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. Amen. Okay, now we see that the angel of the Lord was speaking to uh, Philip. That is the voice of God. The angel was just a messenger. Uh, but here's a very interesting thing. He is, uh, the uh, God was saying, the real geographical direction here go south let's look at this verse again go get up and go south to the road that descends from jerusalem to gaza now if you remember very carefully uh, from last week uh, chapter 7 is the mark of uh, finishing the work of the holy spirit or transitioning from jerusalem to judea and samaria so from chapter 8 until uh, chapter 12 is the story of jerusalem and Ju uh, judea and samaria and from chapter th 13 through 8 28 is the ends of the earth so we see the fulfillment of god's promise that when holy spirit comes upon you you will receive the power and you will be my witnesses starting from jerusalem judea samaria to the ends of the earth and it is still being continued even now 2022 now so chapter 7 and chapter 8 that's the transition as we can even see here uh, you go out from jerusalem go to gaza okay so until here you might like okay that's pretty uh clear and we can see that there's a transition geographical transition and jerusalem and uh, gaza that's not really far away and we can see the spread of the gospel that's all good however here is something that we need to notice. What does it say in parentheses? This is a desert road. This is a desert road. Okay, let's just stop for a moment here. If you were Philip, how would you feel? Okay, if I were Philip, I would feel this way. Okay, um, God just talked to me that I need to go to uh the southern part to gaza however i know what it's like it is a desert road what's up with that i mean i thought god would send me to a strategic place i know that jerusalem is not there's just so much of a persecution going on and god is doing amazing work uh, outside of jerusalem now and god is going to expand he is expanding uh, the kingdom of god in judea and samaria so probably i might need to go to you know more strategic place than the desert but what should i expect from desert you know that's a desert there's no life there, you know, probably there may be no one there. And why would I waste my time going to desert? So if I were Philip, I would feel that way. What would you feel? Probably you will feel the same way. However, Philip was the man of God. He was being filled with the Holy Spirit. So uh, against his common sense, he obeyed the Holy Spirit. He obeyed the will of God. And then we see amazing, amazing uh, turn out because even though it is a desert but when he when he obeyed the voice of god he saw 
a man, but he was not a, a very typical Jewish man, but he was a man from Ethiopia, and he was a eunuch. And this eunuch was a very high official. He was a treasurer of a queen of Ethiopia. The queen's name was Candace. Okay, so he was a very high official, but he was coming from Jerusalem. He was obviously like a seeker that because he was worshiping, he was in Jerusalem to worship the Lord. But on the way from Jerusalem to Ethiopia, he was reading God's word. And then he was probably uh, reading loudly. Um, the Philip was listening to uh, what he was reading. And then this man, Ethiopian eunuch, was reading from Isaiah chapter 53. And he did not know what it, was, what it was about. And Philip was asking, do you know what is going on? Do you know what you are reading? And this man said, no, I have no idea uh, because I don't have anyone to instruct me. And then Philip instructed him. He explained that the Isaiah 53, the suffering servant, is... Jesus Christ. So basically, Philip shared the gospel of Christ Jesus. And then there, this Ethiopian eunuch accepted Jesus. But not just that, he was baptized. And then, amazing thing happened. Transportation happened. Like uh, when you when you were watching the movie, there was someone show up and disappear right away. That happened because um, the Holy Spirit took Philip away and he uh, uh, he, Holy Spirit, placed Philip in a different city to preach the gospel. So, all of a sudden, the Philip disappeared in front of Ethiopian eunuch. But this man did not care about it. He was full of joy because he accepted Jesus. He was baptized. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then, the, according to historians, this Ethiopian eunuch went back to Ethiopia and he planted a church. The gospel was spreading um, across the country because of this one man. So let's look at all, let's sum up all this story together. When the Holy Spirit prompted Philip, when the Holy Spirit spoke to Philip to go to desert, he did not give all the full instruction there. The God did not say, if you go to the desert, you're going to meet this man and he, he will be, he is a very high official, he is a very strategic person, so you must share the gospel with that person. Well, God did not, God did not give all the full instruction. And that's what normal, that's pretty normal. Because when God speaks to us, when the Holy Spirit drives and directs us, He does not show us the whole picture. He shows us very part of it, small part of it, but He gives us the next, next, next direction, step by step, just like uh, just like the uh, Philip. Philip did not have the full instruction. He received the only one direction, which was to go to the desert, go to the desert road. And then he obeyed, and then God said, go to that man. And then, so he obeyed, Philip obeyed, and then he realized that uh, this man was reading from uh, Old Testament. You see the story? You see what's going on here? It's a step-by-step -step obedience. Don't expect that God would speak to you everything. You know, knowing everything does not help you. Many times in Scripture, we see that God is showing very, very small things one by one. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. It's an amazing passage that God called Abraham out of his, his household. But God did not give all the detailed direction to Abraham. Go and leave your father and your household and go to the land that I show you. But God did not say, you're going to go to this and you're going to live here for many, many years and you're going to be successful. God did not say any of that. Just say, go. Go to where I, where I show you. It's a step-by-step -step obedience. And we need to do that. When God saved uh, Israelites out of Egypt, of course God did not show them like how many years they will suffer, how, how many, where and which places they will be traveling to, and what kind of places they are going to uh, obtain when they go to the promised land. God did not give all the instructions. God just said, get out of Egypt. And that's how two million people came out of Egypt. But here's a here's an amazing thing. God led them to the desert. And when you think like, oh, I want to, I don't want to go to desert. Nobody wants to go to desert. Nobody likes wilderness. But there's something special about wilderness. God is leading his people to the wilderness. Why? Because God really wants us, God really wants his people to trust 
God and obey God one by one, step by step. Wilderness is the best place to do that. If you have everything in your pocket, if you have everything that you enjoy around you, it is very difficult for you to focus on God, very difficult to listen to God, and very difficult to obey God step by step. Everyone wants to have a big picture, detail information. But the detailed information will become your idols. Rather than the trusting the Lord, you will trust how much money you will get, how, how, what kind of places you will live, what kind of people you will meet and you will become. You will trust more on that than God Himself. So there is a reason why God is showing us very little by little because He wants us to listen to Him continually. He wants us to obey Him continually. In fact, Exodus 29 verse 46, amazing passage that God said, I saved you out of Egypt so that I can dwell with you. You know, salvation has a clear purpose. It's not just for us to get out of sin and hell, but it is for us to live with God forever. Even if it's a wilderness, if when we live with God, that is heaven. The wilderness is a very difficult place. However, God was with His people. God fed them, God led them, God guided them, God provided everything that they needed. In fact, more than manna, more than uh, all the food, water, God Himself is everything that we need. So wilderness, we experience that blessing. It's the same thing here. Even though Philip did not know what's going to happen in the desert, but in the desert, God led him step by step, and then he experienced the wonderful work of God who saved this man, Ethiopian eunuch. So there was a transformation, and there was even supernatural transportation there. He experienced the Holy Spirit moving him to the different place to, to share the gospel. Philip walked with the Lord, whether it was a desert or whether it was uh, city place, whatever places that it was, Philip was sensitive to the Holy Spirit and he was with the Lord. Likewise, we need to do that. We need to walk with the Lord. And even if it's a wilderness, even if it's uh, the place where we think like, oh, this is not, this is the most unlikely place. However, that's where if, if God is leading you to be there, that's where God is going to show you amazing, amazing work. So just be sensitive and walk with Him, even if it's an unlikely place. In 2002, 2002, that's when I received the vision from the Lord to reach international students with the gospel of Christ Jesus. And at the time, I was in San Francisco, and God led my family to uh, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. But we had no idea how Kentucky would look like. All we knew was a Kentucky Fried Chicken, to be honest with you. No offense. However, it was just a, so amazing because when we arrived in Louisville, Kentucky, there are so many international students in that air, in that town, and international refugees and immigrants. And also, there was a man who was already doing international student ministry, and he became my mentor. And then, uh, all of a sudden, he, uh, I got to plug in the ministry because of him through him. It was, uh, it was God's leading that the Holy Spirit was guiding us uh, through that experience, in that experience that even though uh, it, the Kentucky was an unlikely place for international ministry to us, at least before we landed there, later we realized that that was God's leading for us to be there. So, I mean, human, in the human mind, like uh, California would be a much better place to do international student ministry because there are so many internationals and diversity there. Yes, it is true. However, God's leading is beyond our imagination, beyond our calculation. So we must listen to the Lord, we must obey Him, and we must follow Him whenever, whatever He is leading us. So God does not show you the whole picture, but sometimes God shows you bigger picture. God shows you some details, what's going to happen. In Acts chapter 20, 22, Paul was saying, I'm going to Jerusalem. I don't know what's going to really happen there, but in the following verse, verse 23, Holy Spirit already told him that there will be suffering and even 
uh, amazing, amazing amount of persecution is going to uh, wait for Paul. So Holy Spirit was giving him some details, right? When you go to Jerusalem, you will be persecuted. You can even be killed. Okay. So when the Holy Spirit tells you to do, what does that mean? Does that mean that I should not go there because I'm I I will have some dangers? But that was not the case because in the verse twenty four, the following verse, the Paul said, you know, I have a mission. The direction that God has given me, it is to finish my course to share the gospel of Christ Jesus. So even I don't care about death. I don't really care about my life. I'm just gonna finish it, no matter what happens in front of me to me. So that is the uh, Paul's dedication. Whatever happens to him, he is dedicated to obey God's word. So even sometimes God shows you detail, but that detail may not be very pleasing to you. It may be very scary to you. But no matter what it is, what we need to do is to obey Him, obey the Holy Spirit, walk with the Lord. So even when we do not see clearly, even when we see clearly, but that is not so pleasing to us, if it is the Lord's will, then we must go and obey His word. That is how. That's how Philip and Paul walked, and that is how we should walk as well. We need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We need to listen to Him. There are a lot of people who are saying, "I listened to, I saw this vision. I listened to、uh, what God was speaking to me." But more important thing is this. This is most important. Are you really obeying it? No matter what it is. No matter how unclear it is, no matter how uncertain it is, no matter how foolish it may sound, it may look, and no matter how dangerous it could be, are you willing to obey Him? That is the most most important thing. Yes, we need to listen, but we need we need 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 to obey His word. So I want to pray together now that we will listen. And we would be、uh, obedient to Him as Philip was, so that we can experience the wonderful work of God、uh, through our ministry. That there may be、um, another Ethiopian eunuch, probably another unlikely person that we never imagined, but God can save that person, and God can change the whole country through that person, just like God did. Through this Ethiopian eunuch, but before this Ethiopian eunuch, there was a man who was listening and obeying God's word. That was a Philip. So let's become, let's be like Philip. Let's obey God's word together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for giving us this word that we would listen to your word and we would、uh, obey your word. Father, we thank you that you are speaking to us, even though many times it is not certain. It is not a big picture. It is not in detail. But Father, even if it's just one small voice to go somewhere, Father, we want to be obedient to you. So, Father, please give us obedient heart. Then、uh, let us not be stubborn necked, but we would be sensitive to you, and we would be uh, willing uh, to sacrifice even if it is your word, if if it is your will. Help us and guide us, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' holy name. We pray. Amen.